Okay, now I'm going to talk about placement of arch bars on the uh, maxilla and the mandible for fixation of uh, both mandibular and you can use arch bars to fixate maxillary fractures too. Generally speaking, when comparing the indications for arch bars versus ivy loops, ivy loops are usually used uh, to treat only the simplest fractures. When you start having situations where patients might have uh, bilateral fractures, uh, and especially fractures that run through the dental arch itself, probably that's when you should start to consider uh, using uh, arch bars as opposed to ivy loops. Also, uh, if you're depending upon some other sort of fixation beyond just the dental occlusion, the arch bar can sometimes serve as an additional stabilizing factor uh, in the fixation of the fracture. So here's the typical equipment setup that I would use to place arch bars. Of course you have a 26 gauge uh, stainless steel wire, your retractor is both a Minnesota retractor and a sweetheart tongue retractor again, a gauze director to hold the wire down beneath the cingulums of the anterior teeth, a bar parker handle with a, uh, with a scale on it for measurement if you feel that you need that, uh, wire twister, wire cutter, and mosquito hemostat, and then you have the Eric arch bars themselves. And a little container for your wires, your, the cut wires are actually considered to be sharps. So you want to do something with them so that they don't uh, injure anybody that might be working in the surgical field. After getting everything set up, the next thing that I do is I uh, determine how I want to place my fixation, or in other words, how many teeth I want to involve in the, in the arch bar fixation. Then I'll go ahead and measure that arch length and cut the Eric arch bar to the appropriate length. So the first thing I'm going to do before I apply the arch bars is I'm going to decide exactly where I want them placed uh, in terms of which teeth I'm going to involve. So looking at this typodont here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the arch bar from the uh, second bicuspid on the upper left and I'm going to swing it around all the way to the uh, first molar on the right side. So what I want to do is I want to get an idea of how long the arch bar needs to be. So I'll simply take a length of wire, place it on the distal of the teeth that I'm going to use, and once I've done that, we can simply take the wire and measure it. And then we can use the measurement of the wire to cut the arch bar to the appropriate length. So I've already cut this arch bar here to the correct length and I'll just check it and make sure that it does extend from the distal of the second bicuspid to the distal of the first molar in the maxilla. Of course when you go to the, to the lower jaw you'll have to do the same thing and measure again because the, typically the lower jaw arch length is shorter than the maxillary. So now I've cut my two arch bar lengths. The longer one, as you can see, is for the maxillary teeth, and the shorter arch bar is going to be for the mandibular teeth. So typically what I do first when I'm placing arch bars is I always begin with the maxilla, because uh, if the patient has a fractured mandible, it's going to be very uncomfortable to have their mandible manipulated during the placement of the arch bars. So you're better off getting the maxilla out of the way and saving the more uncomfortable stage of the procedure to the end. So what I'll do first is I'll find uh, a posterior tooth uh, which is an easy tooth to place a wire around and I'll start uh, by placing a wire around a posterior tooth and in this case I'm going to use the uh, maxillary second bicuspid because that looks like a nice easy tooth to place a wire around. So I'll simply take a wire and pass it around the tooth and there's no contact here, so it's a little bit more difficult. When there's contact, it's much easier to do this. And with the wire twister, I'll give that wire a couple of turns, but if you notice here, I've left enough of a gap here so that I can pass the arch bar through it. Once I have my single braided wire around the bicuspid tooth, I'll take my maxillary arch bar with the lugs pointing upwards for the maxilla, and I'll take the arch bar and I'll pass it through the loop, and then I will position the arch bar in exactly the location where I want it to be. 
So in this case, the arch bar is going to go up to the distal of the second molar here. Once you have that position, you take your wire twister, and at this point, the wire is tightened down. And what this does is this locks the arch bar into position. It goes exactly to the second bicuspid on the patient's left side as I plan. So using this wire as your starting point, we work away from this wire and as we place the additional wires we continue to take any slack that might be in the arch bar out. So once we fixated the arch bar in place with the initial wire, we then have to continue wiring the arch bar in place. And this is done by passing a wire mesially and distally to each tooth and alternatingly uh, apically and coronal to the arch bar. So in this case I'm going to pass the wire on the distal of the first bicuspid apical to the arch bar and then the wire will be passed through the mesial of the tooth coming out on the occlusal. Once I've done this I take my wire twister and I tighten down the wire while pulling apically. And now my second wire is in place. I will continue doing this all the way across the arch until the arch bar is completely fixated to all the teeth. When you arrive at the anterior teeth, there's a technical matter that comes up, and that is how do you deal with the cingulum? If when you're placing your arch wires, the wire is not placed sufficiently beneath the undercut of the cingulum, as you tighten the wires down and as the wires loosen over time in the patient's mouth, the wire will start to ride over the cingulum and the arch bar will begin to loosen. So it's very important that when you place the wire initially that it's sufficiently beneath the undercut of the cingulum so that later on while the patient is in fixation it does not ride up over the undercut. To prevent the wire from riding up over the cingulum, have an assistant simply hold the wire down on the paddle as you're tightening it down. Now that I've completed the placement of the maxillary arch bar, I'd like you to note a couple of things. First of all, if you look at the anterior teeth, you'll notice that the interdental wires are placed apical to the cingulum of the teeth. Another thing I'd like you to notice is that when I place the interdental wires around the distalmost teeth of the arch bar, my preference is to place the mesial aspect of the wire occlusal to the bar and the distal part of the pass apical to the bar. That way there's less of a tendency for the bar to slip off on the distalmost teeth in the fixation. The other thing I'd like you to notice is I've not yet cut the wires short at this point and the reason for that is is that while you're placing the wires you can actually use these long wires as retraction uh, for the lips. So once I've completed the maxillary arch bar placement, I'll grab the free end of each wire, and then using a wire cutter, I'll cut off the excess wire, leaving a tail of approximately one centimeter length. Being careful to always hold the free end of the wire with my hemostat, so that the wire does not fly into the patient's eye or somewhere where you don't want it to go. Because the wires are made out of stainless steel, they have a tendency to stretch. And even between the short period of time between the initial placement of the wires and by the time you reach the point of cutting the wires short, they will have already stretched somewhat. So it's always a good idea to go back and give your wires an additional turn or two to make sure you have them down to their full tightness. And remember when you're tightening, to always tighten in a clockwise direction and loosen in a counterclockwise direction. So here I'm always tightening clockwise. 
you notice I'm always pulling on the wires as I tighten also to apply traction to the wire. This is so that the wires do not curl up on themselves. Once you've cut the wire short, it's time to place your final twist into the wire where it's twisted and placed along the gingiva. So the way that I do this is by grabbing the wire at a 90 degree angle with a needle holder, pushing the wire directly against the gingiva and giving it a very hard, usually clockwise turn as you're pushing it against, pushing it against the gingiva. And then, after giving the wire a twist, simply take your wire twister and grab it and squeeze the wire and try to adapt it as best as you can against the gingiva. You should also take care to try to not place these hooked sections of wire into the lug areas themselves because that might make it more difficult to place your inter arch fixation at a later point. Now we'll move on to the mandible, and just like we did in the maxim, we'll take a wire and measure our arch length, and in this case I'm going to go from the lower right first molar to the lower left second bicuspid. So here's my arch length, and using this length I'll cut my arch bar to the appropriate length. So now I've cut my arch bar to conform to the length of the wire. We'll check it to see if I cut the bar to the correct length. and that seems fine to me. So when placing arch bars it's always important to pay attention to the direction of the openings of the lugs on the arch bar. In general the arch bar lug opening should always be directed apically so in the case of the maxilla the lugs open superiorly and in the case of the mandible the openings of the lugs should be facing downwards. So just as in the case of the maxilla I'll place my first loop around the bicuspid tooth which to me is the easiest tooth to place a wire around. Once I have my arch bar positioned exactly where I want it, I then take the single wire and tighten it down over the arch bar, locking it in place. Once you've applied your maxillary mandibular arch bars with the lugs facing in the proper direction, it's now time to apply intermaxillary fixation. Before applying intermaxillary fixation, always check to make sure that the patient is in their pre-injury occlusion. If the patient is not in their pre-injury occlusion, the fractures may have to be manipulated. As a general rule, you do not want to wire the patient down into the incorrect occlusion because that will force the patient to heal in that aberrant position. To create your inter-arch wires, simply take a wire and bend it upon itself like this, creating a fish-like shape. Hold the loop with your fingers and give it a couple of turns. Then place the wire over the lugs that you've chosen. I tend to like to choose four lugs at a time. Tighten the wire down, trying to keep the loop at the level of the occlusal plane. Once you've placed your first intermaxillary wire, it's now time to go to the contralateral side and do the same. Once you've placed the initial wires onto the left and right side, it's important to apply the additional wires in a symmetric fashion. In addition to using wires for your fixation, if you feel it's necessary, you can also use interdental heavy elastics. Cut your wires short. 
tighten the wires and twist them down. Thank you.